Welcome back to our channel for this day 2 exploration trip of Yellowstone Park. As we are heading to the famous Norris Geyser Basin, we saw this cute chipmunk eating tasty berries from the shrub. Before we reach the actual basin, this fast flowing water of Gibbon River line the roadway. The location of Norris Geyser Basin. Here are 15 attractions, geysers, vent, lake and hot springs to see in Norris Geyser Basin. This basin holds the park record for the highest measured surface and subsurface temperatures. Norris is part of one of the world's largest active volcanoes. Many hot springs and fumaroles here have temperatures above the boiling point. Around 200 degree F or 93 degree C. Water fluctuation and seismic activity often change features. Norris is near the intersection of three major faults. Information about the differences between geysers and hot spring. The trails through the geyser basin are a combination of boardwalks, paved paths, and unpaved paths. Each year at Norris new hot springs and geysers appear, others become dormant. Geologic events trigger many of these changes. Norris has the greatest water chemistry diversity among Yellowstone's hydrothermal areas. Multiple underground hot water reservoirs exist here, and as their water levels fluctuate, concentrations of chloride, sulfate, iron, and arsenic change. Many of the colors you see here are evidence of thermophils, heat-loving microorganisms, and their activity. Color within thermal water changes as temperatures and chemistry change. As the water flows out from a hot spring, it gradually cools. This range of water temperature supports various thermophilic habitats. As temperatures or chemical compositions change, microbial populations, and the colors they create, shift to a location they favor. The vast majority of the waters at Norris are acidic, including acid geysers which are very rare. The basin consists of two areas, Porcelain Basin and the Back Basin. Porcelain Basin is barren of trees and provides a sensory experience in sound, color, and smell. A 3-4 mile bare ground and boardwalk trail accesses this area. Back Basin is more heavily wooded with features scattered throughout the area. A 1.5 mile trail of boardwalks and bare ground encircles this part of the basin. Many trees died as the thermal features shifted their locations. In Norris Geyser Basin, there's a notable stench of fresh sulfur that wafts on the crisp mountain air. That's because the geysers here are some of the hottest within Yellowstone National Park, as well as the oldest, tallest, most acidic, and prone to frequent change. Given the elevated levels of heat, this geyser basin is also one of the parks most likely to change, where hot springs can suddenly turn into fumaroles and geysers can spout without warning. For the best way to experience the basin, enjoy the two miles of boardwalk trails that weave past the geysers and hot springs. Stopping to take photos, marvel at the view, and sniff the sulfur on the air. This section of the park is believed to have hot springs that are 115,000 years old, and is also home to Steamboat Geyser, which is the tallest geyser in the world. Unlike the famous Old Faithful, however, Steamboat Geyser has an eruption schedule that's variable and tough to predict. Though when it explodes it can send water upwards of 380 feet in the air. The Echinus Geyser in the Norris Geyser Basin is the largest acidic geyser in the world. And the core temperature of the Earth surrounding it is some of the hottest in the park. But it's not just the temperatures that make Norris so notable. The colors, too, impress us tremendously thanks to a combination of minerals and life forms. The area tends to have more milky blue features than other geothermal spots because of a high silica concentration dissolved in the hot water. 
Reddish orange is another prominent of youth thanks to the poisonous iron oxides and arsenic compounds. Other parts of Norris, those with natural springs, tend to be emerald green due to the blue of refracted light, in combination with the yellow of sulfur lining the pool. The best way to get a great vantage point of these features is to hit one of the boardwalks circling through the area. But don't step off the boardwalk. Places like Norris are constantly changing and feature hollow areas that may have only a thin layer of rock over them. Beneath that layer of rock, boiling, bacteria-filled water. Although most burns received in thermal areas are second and third degree, people have died from falling into thermal features. Emerald Spring Geyser, 27 feet deep and lined all the way down with sulfur. Emerald Spring boasts a vibrant green coloring. That emerald color comes from a mixture of the yellow sulfur with the pool's reflected blue. The Norris Geyser Basin Museum is one of a series of trailside museums in Yellowstone National Park. Designed by architect Herbert Mayer in a style that has become known as National Park Service Rustic. Dogs are welcome to the park if they are on leash and owners pick up after them. Boardwalks are strategically placed so that visitors can see the most exciting actions of the thermal features. This steamboat geyser is not sure whether now is a good time to erupt. Even though visitors and cameras are all ready for the show. Since eruption time and direction are hard to predict, so the park has this sign to warn visitors. Finally, a small-scale eruption occurred. And we only caught the end of its action. Many trees died when thermal features show up too close to them. Basin nests in between rolling hills and mountains. This cistern spring is vast in size and deep blue in color. Some hot springs gush out steam and hot water continuously 24 by 7. The others, although quieter, display stunning vibrant colors. This runoff of hot spring let you know there are two very distinct microorganisms in its water. A very impressive mud pot. A small geyser in the making. Before we leave Norris Geyser Basin, this good eagle-eye view of the big basin really caught our eyes. Our next destination is Mammoth Hot Spring. And we need to drive north on the 8 shape road to get there. Along the road, we have to stop to view these amazing cliff and rock formation. Humans are dwarf compared to their huge sizes. Wonder why they are so white in color. Now we arrive at Mammoth Hot Spring. Mammoth Hot Springs are the main attraction of the Mammoth District. Their features are quite different from thermal areas elsewhere in the park. Traverton formations grow much more rapidly than cinder formations due to the softer nature of limestone. As hot water rises through limestone, large quantities of rock are dissolved by the hot water, and a white chalky mineral is deposited on the surface. The volcanic heat source for Mammoth Hot Springs remains somewhat of a mystery. Hot water flows from Norris to Mammoth along a fault line roughly associated with the Norris to Mammoth Road. Shallow circulation along this corridor allows Norris superheated water to cool somewhat before surfacing at Mammoth. Generally at about 170 degrees Fahrenheit, Mammoth hot springs are a superficial expression of the deep volcanic forces at work in Yellowstone. Several thermal caves, including Capitol Hill and Dude Hill, are major features of the Mammoth Village area. This walking path is along boardwalks, paved trails, or along roads. However, there are steep grades and stairs throughout the trail network. 
Both the top of Canary Springs and Pallet Springs are accessible via wheelchair when snow is not on the ground. The mammoth terraces extend all the way from the hillside where we see them today, across the parade ground, and down to Boiling River. Cold water from the Gardner River mixes with the Boiling River hot spring here. Boiling River is one of the few legal thermal soaking areas in Yellowstone. Soaking in hot springs and other thermal features is prohibited, and features are very fragile. Thermal activity here is extensive both over time and distance. Limestone, deposited here millions of years ago when a vast sea covered this area, provides the final ingredient. For hundreds of years, Shoshone and Bannock people collected minerals from mammoth hot springs for white paint. These minerals contribute to the beautiful terrace structures, along with heat, a natural plumbing system, water, and limestone. The mammoth area exhibits much evidence of glacial activity from the Pinedale glaciation. A beautiful hotel here to accommodate visitors. Up close to all these wonders. Bus dropping off visitors in front of the hotel. Fall is the season for elk rut, when male elk make calls for mating and gather their harems together. We are very lucky to encounter this group of elk resting next to a building. Park rangers block off the area so tourists can only view from a distance. This male elk already tries to mate this early in the season. Ah! Wow! Ha ha ha! The female is not interested. Alright visitor center. This historic structure was built by the United States Army in 1909 as bachelor officers quarters for the cavalry troops who protected the park before the creation of the National Park Service. Exhibits help orient you to Yellowstone's natural and cultural treasures, and provide information for a safe and enjoyable visit by visitors of all abilities. What do you think after seeing these dazzling images of mammoth hot spring terraces? We are so grateful that these wonders are protected since long time ago. So that tourists can enjoy their beauty today. This concludes our day 2 trip to Yellowstone Park. Don't forget to watch our day 1 and day 3 videos on this channel. Thank you. Please like and subscribe for more.